G'day everyone, Viv here, welcome back. It's time to get these behemoths painted. They've both been sealed. Now it's time to paint them. Now I'm gonna be a lazy man and this might not work out properly, but I'm gonna use that big uh, fence sprayer to uh, base coat these in sort of a, a tannish sort of gray color. I've no idea what color scheme I'm gonna paint them, but we're gonna start off with uh, maybe something that's gonna be a sandy result. So let's go. Let's go try this. I'd probably save a lot of time and a lot of paint by using a brush, but like I said, if I can do these in a minute, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back now. Our pieces have been outside in the beautiful hot weather, drying up nicely. And as you may be able to see, I've already gone ahead and applied the first dry brush to uh, my model. We'll have a closer look at that. Then uh, I'll finish off the second one. We'll come back with some subsequent dry brushes, some inking, and we'll see how things develop. Okay, so I've given this an overall dry brush. And as... Typical with a dry brush, it looks like it's been dry brushed. So I'm not massively happy with that. So I found two different colors. The one I was using, the one that's a little bit darker, probably very similar to the base coat. And I'm just gonna mix them a little bit and apply in splotches and around the area. Quite a heavy sort of stabbing of color around the place. Just to break that dry brushing up a little bit and give some variation to what is supposed to be some rock. So I'm going to do this with a couple of different colours. So I wasn't entirely happy with this, so I've taken a much darker colour and whilst the paint's all still wet, I'm trying to just hit some of these shadows with some paint, just getting it in there, and then uh, trying to just work it around. So let's have a very quick look at the comparison between the one that's been undercoated and then just given that first layer of dry brush between the one that I dry brushed and then blended some paint onto. And you can see this has given a lot more variation in the color tones, which is really what we're looking for. Because by the time we apply some washes to this and then a little bit more dry brushing and some soil and foliage and tufts and all that sort of stuff, it's gonna come up much better. So that's where we are at the moment. Okay, so this has been outside drying. This next step is going to be a little bit of an experiment because I can't find my spra bottle spray. So I've just mixed up uh, some water with a little bit of paint. I didn't rinse this brush, so it's got all three different colours in there. And this has sort of gone this murky sort of uh, dirt colour. And uh, I'm just going to splash it on this model. We'll see what happens. Um, you really want the model to be dry when you do this. I'm going to splash it on there. And then uh, I'm going to take some paper towel, which is right here. Oh, I should have been prepared. And just sort of try and mop up any excess. I'm just trying to get this brush into the recesses, a little bit on the surface, but uh, I just want it to sort of flow down. There we go, that's all I'm going to do. 
it looks a little bit messy still at this stage, but I'm confident it's gonna come up okay. So here we go, she's been drawing. Those recesses look a lot darker than they actually are. They are actually pretty dark actually, no, they're dark. So that's what it looks like so far. Oh, see now this is where one of those little spinny plates, I've got them hanging around the place so I could spin it around without all this noise. Here, let me walk around. There you go, so that's what she's looking like so far. Not entirely happy with it. I'm going to give it a little bit of a dry brush and see what she comes up like. So I've gone with a colour very similar to the base coat. Just sort of So there we go, there's our base coat colour, or close to base coat, and uh, now I'll just do a very light dry brush, just on mainly on the top and some of the edges, not of that colour, ooh, of this colour. There we go. So the best advice I could probably give you guys is don't listen to me. I have no idea what I'm doing. I am not entirely happy with that. Part of it is because of the texture. Part of it is because I don't know how to paint. And I just try random things every time I do something. I have no set method. It's experimentation 100% of the time. But there you go. Let me do it and show you, and then you know uh, sort of what not to do, and possibly you might know what you need to do to make it look better. Right, so there we go. Now we know what we don't need to do when we're painting mountains. At least in that colour scheme, I've never done it before. It was always going to be an experiment. Uh, I'm not massively happy how it came up, but eh, what can you do? Uh, I've got heaps more stuff to keep on building and trying more different things. So I've got more of those mountains to continue on with. We'll see how they come up. Those come up. Maybe I'll try a different colour scheme for those ones. Next, we're going to finish the detailing on this. Add some soil, grasses, a um, little bit of static grass, some flocks, shrubs, bushes, all that sort of stuff. So coming up in the next video, that's what we'll see. Thanks for checking this one out, guys. I'll catch you next time. See ya. Well, there we go, the painting is finished. Is that a hot glue going on? Oh, fuck, that's bloody hot.